NASA detected a mysterious object. Three weeks ago, the unthinkable happened. A shadowy hacker collective calling itself Event Horizon penetrated NASA's secure servers in the dead of night. Speeding toward Earth, and some actual bona fide experts think it might not be your typical space rock or maybe any kind of rock. In just seven minutes, they siphoned out 24 gigabytes of data. Not public research, not sanitized press updates, but internal mission files stamped confidential and top secret. The files belong to a mission labeled 3i slash Atlas, shorthand for the third interstellar object ever tracked by humanity. Within days, screenshots of these documents began circulating on encrypted forums and niche science channels. They weren't rumors. They carried mission patches, NASA headers, security stamps, and metadata all consistent with the agency's internal formatting and the contents. They hinted at something NASA never intended for the public to see. The leak suggested that 3i slash Atlas was no ordinary comet. According to the stolen data, the object didn't just follow the natural laws of physics, it appeared to bend them. Logs showed sudden sideways acceleration, impossible course corrections, and bursts of heat synchronized with trajectory changes. Even more disturbing were the images, surfaces that looked smooth and metallic, cut by seams and ridges too precise to be natural. Why would NASA conceal this? Why redact entire pages of reports, leaving only cryptic words like plume anomaly or directive motion event? Event Horizon's manifesto put it bluntly, the world deserves to know what its own scientists have found, and what they found may force us to rethink not just the science of comets, but the possibility that something out there is watching us back. On the morning of September 2, 2025, NASA's cybersecurity logs showed something strange, a gap a complete blank spot where data should have been. Later, forensic analysis revealed why. Between 3.14 and 3.30 a.m., Eastern hackers had tunneled into the agency's servers, escalated their privileges, and quietly exfiltrated a compressed archive. The attack unfolded with chilling precision. At 3.14, initial access was gained through a vulnerability in an outdated mission planning module, software that hadn't been patched in years. By 319, the intruders had administrator-level control. Four minutes later, they began siphoning out files labeled 3i slash Atlas. By 330, the connection was gone. The servers locked down. What they left behind was even stranger than the breach itself. Unlike most hacker groups, Event Horizon wasn't motivated by money. They didn't demand ransom, didn't sell the files on the dark web. Instead, they released a manifesto on encrypted forums. The post declared the hack was retaliation against what they called unlawful cosmic secrecy. Their words dripped with defiance. These files were hidden even from senior NASA directors. They contain evidence so profound it cannot remain locked away. Humanity has the right to know. The manifesto was accompanied by blurry screenshots. NASA email threads with subject lines like Atlas Intercept Anomaly Review, technical spreadsheets with rows of spectrometry data, and incident reports stamped Top Secret slash 8CI. Each bore NASA's internal watermark, courier font headers, and the Deep Space Network footer. One even displayed a mission patch, an illustration of a comet streaking past a NASA vector with the code 3 I slash Atlas NT beneath it. By the next morning, fragments of the files were already being dissected on conspiracy forums, YouTube channels, and encrypted chat groups. NASA scrambled to contain the damage, issuing no official statement but quietly locking down entire divisions. The breach didn't just expose data. It exposed a fault line between what NASA knows and what the public is allowed to believe. And buried in those stolen files was a story that began months earlier in a quiet observatory in Hawaii. On July 1, 2025, the Atlas Survey Telescope in Hawaii logged a faint object streaking across the sky. At first, astronomers assumed it was another near-Earth asteroid, the kind they catalog by the thousands. But within minutes, the numbers coming in made no sense. This object wasn't crawling across the sky. It was blazing in at 130,000 miles per hour. Its size, based on brightness estimates, was colossal, 26 kilometers across, roughly the width of Manhattan. By comparison, the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs was only about 10 kilometers wide. 
If this thing hit Earth, it would be an extinction-level event. But the strangest part wasn't its size or speed, it was its path. Orbital calculations from the minor planet center showed an eccentricity greater than six. In plain terms, that means the object wasn't bound to our solar system. It was on a hyperbolic trajectory, a one-way ticket from deep interstellar space. To put that in context, most comets from the Oort cloud barely reach an eccentricity of one. They loop around the sun and return. This thing wasn't looping. It was passing through, never to return. Dr. Lena Takahashi, a veteran survey scientist on duty that night, later described the moment to colleagues. The track was so steep the software flagged it as an error. We had to double-check the data by hand. But the numbers held. This wasn't a comet in the usual sense. This was something else entirely. Further observations confirmed the trajectory. The object was slicing across the solar system at a shallow angle, its approach vector pointing back toward the constellation Lyra. Its inclination, just five degrees off Earth's orbital plane, was suspiciously coincidental, almost as if it had been aimed. Within hours, telescopes in Chile, Arizona, and Spain locked onto the visitor. The data converged. This was the third interstellar object ever detected, after Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. But unlike those, 3i slash Atlas was larger, faster, and, according to early models, behaving in ways that defied known physics. That's when NASA approved something it had never attempted before, a direct intercept mission, a chance to send probes and gather data up close before the object slipped out of the solar system forever. What they found would make even seasoned scientists question whether they were studying a comet or a machine. The first leaked images from the intercept mission were enough to ignite panic in NASA's review rooms. What should have been a fractured, dusty comet nucleus looked wrong. Even in raw, uncorrected frames, analysts spotted something unusual. Instead of jagged contours and random pits like Halley's or Temple One, 3i slash Atlas displayed broad, flat bands of material that glinted like polished alloy. Across these surfaces ran straight lines, crisscrossing at right angles and stretching for kilometers. They weren't the chaotic fissures of a frozen rock. They looked like seams. One analyst described them as the radiator problem. In several frames, raised ridges formed a grid-like pattern, spaced evenly like the cooling fins on spacecraft heat sinks. Under oblique sunlight, these ribs cast long, parallel shadows across the surface, too regular to be natural. NASA's anomaly detection software agreed. The automated system flagged the geometry as artificial pattern probability far above normal thresholds. The object's reflectance profile, the way it scattered sunlight, only deepened the mystery. Instead of scattering light randomly like porous ice, it bounced light back in a flat, mirror-like pattern closer to sheet metal than stone. When one high contrast frame was enhanced, the image revealed a diamond-shaped plate bordered by a shallow groove, its edges unnaturally clean, too sharp for dust, too uniform for a fracture. Then came the infrared overlays. Thermal imaging showed heat pooling along the seams, then venting from nodes that pulsed at regular intervals. This was not the chaotic outgassing of ice under sunlight. It was structured, timed, and strangely localized. In a leaked chat log, one analyst wrote, If this is a comet, it's wearing armor. Another suggested it resembled a derelict satellite the size of a city. Comparisons with known comet surfaces. Halley, Temple 1, Borisov, collapsed under scrutiny. None had such symmetry, none such reflective flatness. The longer the team studied the images, the less plausible natural explanations became. And yet, the alternative, that they were staring at a constructed surface, was even harder to accept. Still, the data was clear. Whatever 3i slash Atlas was, its skin told a story no comet ever could. If the images raised eyebrows, the spectroscopy results nearly broke the review team. Martin Cordner's group at Goddard Space Flight Center was tasked with analyzing the infrared spectra captured during the intercept. Their logs, later leaked by Event Horizon, described 42 gigabytes of raw data locked behind restricted access. What the data revealed defied every expectation. In nearly all comets, iron and nickel appear together in cosmic dust. Iron dominates, with nickel present only as a trace. 
but in the spectrum of 3i slash atlas, iron was missing entirely. In its place were sharp, isolated nickel lines stronger than anything ever recorded from a natural body. That was the first shock. The second came from the object's heat signature. Infrared arrays recorded heat pulses every 90 seconds, so precise they looked mechanical. The pulses originated along the ribbed seams seen in the images, then vented outward as tight, directed jets. Not random, not chaotic, timed like a metronome. Each burst of heat coincided with a trajectory change. The object would subtly correct its path, always in the direction necessary to maintain its hyperbolic escape. NASA's logs labeled the events Directive Motion Anomalies, a term usually reserved for thruster firings on spacecraft. For comparison, natural comet outgassing is messy and unpredictable, like steam escaping a boiling kettle. What Atlas showed was the opposite regular, precise, and efficient. Some engineers whispered the unthinkable. If you wanted to slow down after crossing interstellar space, you'd fire engines sunward at perihelion, exactly what 3i slash Atlas was doing. When Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, already infamous for suggesting Oumuamua was artificial, saw the leaked summaries, he called the evidence a propulsion blueprint. He argued the heat pulses matched what you'd expect from ion drives, engines that push not with fire but with electric fields and charged particles. Was 3i slash Atlas steering itself? If so, then NASA hadn't just intercepted a comet. It had intercepted something built with a purpose. The strangeness didn't end with heat and motion. The leaked files included telemetry logs from NASA's radio monitoring network. What they recorded shouldn't have been there. As the intercept probe pinged the object, faint repeating echoes came back. Not random static, but precise clipped signals, timed almost perfectly with the 90-second heat pulses. Veteran telemetry specialist Marissa Singh noted the pattern in a leaked chat. It's like someone is pinging the probe and it's answering. The timing is too tight for random noise. The signals were weak, buried in the noise floor, but unmistakable. They weren't broad-spectrum bursts like pulsars, nor chaotic emissions from outgassing plasma. They were structured, repeating, and synchronized. This was where NASA's redactions grew heaviest. Entire paragraphs of the radio analysis reports were blacked out. The words synchronized response and signal modulation anomaly were barely visible between the sensor bars. Some outside experts suggested the echoes were interference. Earth origin signals bouncing off the object, but internal memos implied otherwise. The frequency drift, timing, and correlation with heat pulses all suggested the signals originated from within 3i slash Atlas itself. That revelation split the review team. Was the object merely reflecting the probe's transmissions like a passive mirror? Or was it actively responding, a kind of handshake, a machine acknowledging detection? Whatever the truth, one fact remained undeniable. No natural comet had ever emitted anything like it. And if the signals were intentional, then humanity had just heard the first reply from an interstellar visitor. If the heat pulses and radio echoes shook scientists, the dust fragments recovered by the intercept probe nearly stopped the review in its tracks. The probe carried a dust collector designed to capture particles from the object's coma for later analysis. Most of what it gathered was expected microscopic grains of frozen carbon dioxide and water ice, but one fleck, smaller than a grain of sand, was anything but ordinary. When lab technicians placed it under electron microscopy, what they saw was impossible. The fragment displayed a layered lattice of silicon, doped with phosphorus, arranged in sheets separated by micron intervals. It wasn't random crystal growth. It looked engineered, a miniature semiconductor wafer. NASA's internal memo, partially leaked, carried a chilling line in bold. Semiconductor structure detected. Artificial origin cannot be excluded. The fragment wasn't just unusual. It was the kind of material you'd expect inside a microchip, not drifting in interstellar space. Analysts described it as a circuit too small to function alone, like a shard snapped off a larger architecture. This raised an uncomfortable question. If the dust collector snagged one fleck, how many others floated in the object's coma? Was 3i slash Atlas shedding debris from a larger machine? 
Or was the entire object itself a colossal construct, its panels and seams part of a derelict probe the size of Manhattan? For many on the inside, the dust fragment was the final straw. A comet made of ice and rock was one thing. A comet venting heat on a clock was another. But a comet that shed microchip dust into a NASA collector? That was no comet at all. The official files never drew a conclusion. They stopped at the phrase, artificial origin cannot be excluded. But between the lines, the meaning was clear. NASA had intercepted something that might not be natural, something that might not be silent, and something that might have been built by hands or machines, not of this world. In September 2025, 24 gigabytes of NASA's deepest secrets slipped into public view. What they revealed wasn't just another icy rock from deep space. It was a mystery wrapped in data points, anomalies, and redactions. The files told of a 26-kilometer object hurtling through the solar system at 130,000 miles per hour, an object that didn't drift randomly, but corrected its own path, an object whose skin gleamed with metallic seams, whose veins pulsed with heat on a 90-second rhythm, and whose voice whispered back in faint, repeating radio echoes. Most chilling of all, it left behind a silicon lattice dust fragment, a shard that looked less like a comet's gift and more like a circuit board broken off a machine. NASA will likely never confirm the full truth. Too much has been redacted, too many memos locked behind eyes-only clearances, but the leak has already changed the conversation. We used to think of interstellar visitors as curiosities, astronomical accidents drifting into our skies. But what if they are messages? What if they are machines? What if the universe has been sending probes and we've only just begun to notice? For now, the story of 3i-slash-Atlas remains unresolved. A blurred set of images, a handful of anomalous readings, and a silence from NASA louder than any denial. But one truth lingers, undeniable and unsettling. We are no longer just observers of the universe. The universe, it seems, may be observing us back.